I'm Ellis Coase, and I want to introduce you to Against the Odds. It's an occasional series of documentary specials about people in America and around the world overcoming adversity. Each story is different. Some of them will flourish from day one. Some of them will struggle. Some of them will suffer from post-traumatic stress. Some of them will dream of home every night. I literally brought Afghanistan with me. I brought the pains of Afghanistan. I brought the changes in Afghanistan. I brought the plights of Afghanistan in the images that, that, that accompanied me. When you think about your father, when you think about your mother that you haven't seen since several years ago, uh, what do you think happened to them? I, that's what one thing I, I always wonder about. I don't know if they are alive or they are not, if they shoot them that day or... That's what um, it makes me afraid. I don't know if they are alive. Over 10 million people languish in refugee camps around the world. And those who get out face yet another set of challenges. From a one-room shack in a desert hell to the hallowed halls of Princeton University. This is the story of a young man who, in doing the improbable, inspired others to believe they could do the same. January 1991. Somalia's president, Mohamed Siad Bar, is overthrown after a four-week battle in Mogadishu, a country of 6.5 million largely nomadic herders plunges into civil war. Abbas Hassan Mohammed is nine years old. In 1991, armed men would force their way into our house and uh, interrogate my father. My family uh, fled from Somalia to Kenya in February 1992 uh, because we feared for, for our own security. Before Abbas's family could flee, his father was picked up. I was taken to a military camp 14 kilometers from the town. On the way, they told me, today is your last day in this world. You're going to be killed. It was after that I was convinced. Convinced that the country was collapsing and that, as a member of a minority clan, he would always be a target. We carried anything of our belongings that we could carry on our backs. Anything that was not important, we left behind. Exhausted, dehydrated, broke, the father begged friends and relatives for money to get them to the border. When they arrived in the Kenyan desert, Hassan Muhammad fell to his knees and prayed. I said instead of taking my children where I could get money, I would prefer to go to a place where all of my children can get an education. That was a prayer I made. In the camp was very, very difficult. Well, the, the family was entirely, entirely dependent on what the United Nations Refugee Agency and the World Food Progr Program were giving to us as, uh, as handouts. Whatever food we were given was never enough. He was raised in one of the world's most barren refugee camps, without running water, without electricity, with the most primitive educational system imaginable. Our home was made of the plastic sheet provided by the UN that covers a few twigs that have been joined together using ropes. And people sleep on a mat, which is laid on the ground. Abbas's father set up a kiosk in the market, selling sugar, tea, vegetables, whatever he could get his hands on. At night, you can't move uh, out of your houses because bandits or what they call shifters roaming around trying to prey on people. One night, the shifters came. My family was raided by, by three bandits. Uh, they came at 7 p.m. and pointed gun at everyone, ordering everyone to lie flat on his chest on the ground. One of the gunmen told Abbas, I already killed your father and mother. I will kill you if you don't tell me where the money is. They came in and uh, flashed a light on my face and then dragged me from bed and threw me on the ground, kicking me, punching me. The family's loss amounted to about 90 US dollars. The experience confirmed a key lesson for Hassan Muhammad. Life without freedom 
was unremittingly harsh, and freedom for someone like him only came through education. When a child is born and his umbilical cord is cut, what people normally do is they will tie that umbilical cord with what they want their child to be passionate of in the future. If they want their child to, to like keeping animals, then they will tie that onto an animal. I decided that when a child is born in my family, instead of tying the umbilical cord of the child to an animal, I tie it to a book and a pen. In 2003, Abbas Hassan Mohammed took the exam for the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education. He ranked first in the northeastern province of Kenya and eighth in the entire country. A professor visiting from Princeton thought he might be Ivy League material. This professor, he sent us Princeton application forms. I've, I've never heard of Princeton then. Um, I just knew it was just a school in, in the U.S. And, and that was all. I thought this was wackery, which is diagnostic of the problem. I think institutionally, we don't think of these things as really possible. You can't imagine my, my joy when I, when I read the fact that I was, I was given admission and uh, full financial aid. You know, he, he was absorbing everything. I, that's what I sense right away, is that he was uh, a little bit in awe, maybe, of uh, the um, surroundings. He was definitely friendly and um, very grateful. Right away, actually, struck me as somebody who, who, who was, I had a great feeling about it, as somebody who was, who was, who was going to be OK. I've enjoyed my stay in, uh, at Princeton University for, for the last two years. It opens so many doors for me, so many opportunities. I'm here to empower myself with education so that I can go back home and make a difference. You make use of the resources you have at your level. You don't look for further things. You don't envy people. You don't say, why did so make it and I can't make it? You say, so made it because it's not. Let me try to make it. If you believe in yourself a lot, it's possible. My father is, is my hero. My mother is also my hero. So I'm, I'm, I'm a product of, of all these people, organizations, individuals coming together and, and making this, uh, this dream a reality. Beyond Abbas's dream lie two simple questions. Why should he, gifted and hardworking as he is, be such a splendid exception? And how can we capture the light that shines on him and let it shine on others who are just as deserving? This is Ellis Coase. The program is Against the Odds. Against the Odds is produced with funding from the Ford Foundation and distributed by PRI. It will be available to public radio stations in November.